Hi, I'm David Abrams, and today we'll provide an overview of the Patterns Video Generator for Mac OS. First, let's launch Patterns. Notice, we're immediately greeted with the IP addresses of the system. This is useful for quickly connecting patterns to an external application such as Calman. Below the IP address, there's a disclaimer that the display will not sleep while running. If you're like me, you've probably forgotten to turn off the screensaver or sleep mode while measuring computer systems. With patterns, we take care of all of it for you so you can focus on the task at hand. Let's dismiss this window by pressing OK. If you wish to bring it back up, navigate to the Patterns app menu and select Show IP. Speaking of app menus, there are five menus Patterns, Color Space, Colors, Test Patterns, and Help across the top. The Colors and Test Patterns menus offer a quick way to bring up one of the pre-configured patterns, whereas the Color Space menu will assign Color Space to the pattern window. You'll get more on that later, but one thing to note is the measurement range setting at the top. This setting defines the input values to the pattern generator, not the output. It was added to support one of our integration partners' use cases to send narrow or legal range values to the application. If interested in integrating your hardware or software with the patterns generator, please reach out to sales at portrait.com. For now, we'll leave the measurement range in full. Let's head over to the Patterns app menu and select Preferences. Here, you'll see the IP addresses visible under the Settings header. Next to Settings is Licensing, and where you can activate or refresh your Patterns license. Let's close out of the Preference menu and review our other options in the Patterns app menu. Here we find typical menu options such as About, Full Screen, Hide, and Quit. But we have a few other options. Let's start with the ICC Builder. This is a really powerful tool that allows us to create ICC profiles with or without a 1D lookup table, also known as a LUT. Let's quickly build an ICC profile together. Here, I'll choose my display's color gamut as P3 with a D65 white point. However, if I want a color gamut not selected, I can select the X and Y fields above and enter any gamut target desired. Next, let's select a gamma or EOTF of 2.2. If we had a custom 1D LUT to optimize the grayscale in EOTF, we would select read VCGT and load our LUT file. For now, let's choose the display we wish to apply the profile and press Save ICC. The ICC profile has now been created and applied to the monitor we've selected. Press Done to dismiss the window. Let's go back up to our Patterns app menu and select Open Color Sync. This is a great shortcut for accessing the Color Sync application. Patterns opens up Color Sync to the Devices menu. Let's take a look at the profile we just created. I'll select the ProDisplay XDR in the left-hand column. Notice that we have a new profile loaded with today's date. Click Open to bring up the details and navigate to the end in for the native display information. Our phosphor values are P3 with a D65 white point, and our response curves are at 2.2. We've now verified that our ICC profile was created and applied to the desired display. Let's close out of Color Sync and go back to our Patterns app menu. You've probably noticed that we've not only created a shortcut to Color Sync, but also Display Preferences. Selecting Open Display Preferences launches the system settings and takes us directly to the displays. Here we can access parameters such as brightness and true tone. Let's close out of System Settings and go back to our Patterns app menu. There's one more option we have yet to discuss, Open Web Panel. This is one of my favorite things about Patterns, as it provides a level of flexibility never before seen in a pattern generator. Let's take a look. As we select Open Web Panel, you'll notice the default web browser launches to the Patterns web user interface. Across the top, we have various patterns in the carousel format. To select a pattern, click on the pattern to render it. Notice that each time a pattern is rendered, the pattern window is brought to the front. This is intentional and meant to ensure the window is always on top when making measurements. Gone are the days where an accidental click or background trigger covers the pattern and ruins the measurement. Below the carousel is a question mark that will reveal more detail regarding the pattern itself. To close the description, press the question mark again. For patterns that have customizations, you'll notice more options to customize in almost an infinite amount of ways. Let's select the ramp test pattern. Here, we can choose between horizontal or vertical orientation. Let's select vertical for now. In the steps, we can customize the granularity of the pattern. I'll enter 21 to render a 21 step grayscale. But what if we wanted a shallow ramp? Patterns operates in 16 bit, so we'll enter 65535 and nearly instantly Patterns has rendered a 16 bit shallow ramp. Excellent for visually evaluating the bit depth of the system. But below the steps, we have further customizations. Let's say we wanted to evaluate blue instead of gray. To do that, 
I'll select the left top option, select blue, then move the luminance slider all the way to zero. This starts my ramp at zero on the left hand side. Now let's select right bottom, select blue, and take the luminance slider all the way to the right. We've now made a shallow ramp for blue from zero to 100%. If we look at the RGB tripping values above our luminance slider, we can precisely determine the levels of the pattern. Of course, not everyone thinks about levels in 16-bit precision. And because of this, we've added the ability to change the bit depth of the user interface. Let's click on the gear icon at the top right of our web page. The patterns engine runs at 16 bits of precision. And while the engine will still operate at 16 bits of precision, we can change the user interface to 12, 10, or 8. As you can see below, the web user interface updates the values as I click through these options. Let's close out of this menu and take a look at some of the other patterns. I'll select the corner patch pattern. This is an excellent pattern for testing loading behavior as well as backlight response. You may notice the slider from 0 to 0.9999%. To use this, select a patch size of zero, and then slide to increase the value of the patch in between. This helps to check for blooming as well as when a display's backlight may turn on. Of course, we also have a customizable patch pattern. Here we have the most commonly used sizes, but you can also set the size by manually entering a value on the right. Let's enter 50%. If you wish to add a background color to the patch, we can select background, choose a color, and either enter a value or use our slider to set the level. You may have noticed the luminance steps on the bottom left. For those of you that may not be using an application with patterns integration, we put the most common set of steps for manual adjustment. For example, let's set this to 11. This divides the values from 0 to 100% by 11 equal steps. We can now slide through those 11 steps or step through using our arrow keys. A great way to optimize patterns for manual measurements. There's one more really great thing about the web user interface, and that's that it can be controlled from any web browser on the network. If you're like me, you may have tried to measure a monitor where the light meter or calibration equipment or even items on the desk may make it difficult to access the user interface while calibrating. Well, not anymore. Simply go to any web browser or any device on the network and type in the IP address of the pattern's computer followed by colon 5994. If you have an iPhone or iPad, we recommend that you download our Patterns Remote iOS application. It will auto-discover all copies of patterns running on the network. Let's take a quick look at how Patterns Remote renders the user interface on my iPhone. Patterns are accessible by swiping through the patterns carousel and all adjustments in the UI have been optimized for touch. Select the patch pattern brings up the familiar interface we saw in Mac OS. And I can select the window size, color, change my bit depth, and set my level all without fumbling through complex menus and extensive button presses. Now let's take a step back because we have one more killer feature we'd like to go over. But first, let's ask what good is a pattern if we don't know what it's supposed to be? Typically, a video system is designed to represent one image in one standard at one time. Think of a display in a typical home environment when a standard dynamic range source such as HDTV is rendered. The display goes to a picture mode optimized for that content. When a high dynamic range signal is rendered, the display switches to an HDR picture mode. This isn't ideal as computers render many windows from many sources on the same screen all at the same time. What if I had Photoshop file open in Adobe RGB while also working in DaVinci Resolve in BT709? I would have two applications windows open with two different color spaces. If I calibrate my monitor to Adobe RGB, BT709 will appear oversaturated. If I calibrate to BT709, Adobe RGB would appear undersaturated. To accommodate for this, computer systems use active color management to transform the color space of the content into the color space of the display. To truly test the system, we would want to test the color management signal path to ensure the front of screen measurement is as expected. After all, you wouldn't want to calibrate your display to sRGB when you're going to be working in Adobe RGB. You'd want to make sure that you can access all of the larger Adobe RGB color space. Patterns is the first application available that allows the user to quantify, calibrate, and validate both SDR and HDR color spaces on Mac OS. These color spaces are accessible from the app menu or web user interface. Select the color space you would like to test and Patterns instantly updates in real time. We hope you enjoyed our Patterns walkthrough with its IP control, ICC builder, 16-bit pattern engine, customizable patterns, and color space support for both SDR and HDR, we believe it ushers in a new era for the pattern generator, and we're just getting started.